For the past 15 years, this government has shortchanged local councils. It didn't matter if the Scottish Government's budget went up or down, local authorities had their budgets cut, and now they are at financial breaking point. Two of Scotland's most senior councillors said this week council services face being either significantly reduced, cut or stopped altogether. Local authorities will have to consider cutting pupil support staff, libraries, youth work and Presenting officer, for the past 15 years, this government has shortchanged local councils. It didn't matter if the Scottish Government's budget went up or down, local authorities had their budgets cut, and now they are at financial breaking point. Two of Scotland's most senior councillors said this week, council services face being either significantly reduced, cut or stopped altogether. Local authorities will have to consider cutting pupil support staff, libraries, youth work and other vital services. Are these councillors wrong? First Minister. Uh, councillors are not wrong to say that we live in times of real financial difficulty and constraint. That's true of the Scottish Government and it is absolutely true of councils uh, across our country. Um, this time every year, I think I made this comment a couple of weeks ago, uh, we hear these kind of questions uh, as councils look at options put before them. Often these options uh, are not taken forward, uh, but it is important that all councils uh, look carefully at how they balance uh, their budgets, but do that in a way uh, that also fulfils uh, their priorities. In the budget for the financial year about to start, and of course Parliament will debate the budget at stage one uh, this afternoon, uh, we are proposing an increase in the resources available to local government of over uh, £570 million. Uh, that's a, a real terms increase of £160 million. Pounds. Uh, so times are difficult for local government, but within the constrained financial resources that we have, of course, resources increase by decisions. Uh, we are also taking and proposing to Parliament to ask uh, those who earn the most to pay a bit more. Uh, we are treating local government as fairly as we possibly can. The final point I would make, Presiding Officer, and it's an invitation to Anna Sarwar and to anyone across the Chamber. If there is a proposition to give more money uh, as we go through this budget process to local government, by all means come and make that suggestion, but tell us where in the budget we should take uh, that money from. That is the only grown-up and mature way uh, to come to budget deliberations. Anna Sarwar. Why are these councillors considering budget cuts? They are considering cuts because of decisions made by this government. £6 billion of core budget cuts since 2013-14. And those words I quoted were the words of SNP councillors Shona Morrison and Katie Hagman, the President and Resource Spokespersons of COSLA. Two SNP councillors brave enough to say out loud what this SNP government knows is the truth. Councillor Hagman also said councils are left with little choice other than to potentially raise council tax, raise our fees and charges, or cut or potentially even stop our vital services that we are currently providing. And when asked if council tax may have to rise by as much as 10 per cent, she said, all options are very much on the table. The public are being asked to foot the bill for public services that are getting worse by the week because this government underfunded councils for 15 years. First Minister, why are people across Scotland being asked to pay more for less? First Minister. Well, that is, is not the case, but let me repeat the offer I've made to Anna Sarwar. We will, as a parliament, debate the budget for next year at stage one this afternoon. Uh, the budget uh, proposals will then go through the other stages before the budget is passed uh, by parliament as a whole. Now, we have put forward uh, a balanced budget. We've allocated all of the resources we have at our disposal. Uh, within that budget, uh, we are increasing uh, local government resources by over half a billion pounds. But if Anna Sarwar is saying uh, that he thinks local government should get more money than that, then let him bring forward that proposal. But also tell us, uh, because there is no unallocated pot of cash, tell us where we should take the extra money from. Should it be from the National Health Service? Should it be from the police? Should it be from the central government education budgets? These are, are real questions yep. uh, that if Anna Sarwar is standing here arguing for a bigger increase for local government, which you know, is legitimate, he has a right to do that, 
But if he wants to be taken seriously, he also has to say where that money should come from. So I'm waiting. I'm open to any suggestion that Anna Sarwar wants to make. Anna Sarwar. What the First Minister wants to ignore is all the waste this government is doing, the vanity projects, the money hidden behind the sofa for the deal for the Greens, all that, all that cuts that they've had right across this country. She knows that she has taken the decisions that have slashed council budgets because for 15 years the SNP have underfounded councils. Even her ministers, even when her ministers had more money to spend. Let's hear Mr. And now Sarwar. people across Scotland are facing the double whammy of increased income taxes and hikes in council tax. That means taxes will go up, not just for the richest, but almost every household in Scotland, but services will still be cut. And now a leaked COSLA document reveals potential job losses on a massive scale. They estimate over 7,000 jobs will be lost. 7,000. And this is what council leaders in her own party say. This budget settlement will have a detrimental impact on vital local services. It will lead to the loss of jobs both within local authorities and within the local companies who supply goods and services to councils. After 15 years of command and control, things have gone so bad that many of Nicola Sturgeon's own colleagues are no longer willing to blindly follow the orders. Her MPs have lost faith in the strategy. Her councillors have lost faith in her decisions. And now her MSPs face a choice. Will they vote through these cuts or will they finally finally stand up for the local communities. First Minister. Uh, the, 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 the problem for Anna Sarwar is the verdict of the Scottish people that yeah. matters, which is why I'm standing uh, here and absolutely. he is sitting over there. But Anna Sarwar has just demonstrated there, I think, that he does not yet deserve to be taken seriously uh, in these exchanges because, you know, absolutely correct to say uh, that these are really difficult times for local government as they are for central government when it comes to the allocation of resources. We have put a draft budget before Parliament, uh, and I stress that word, draft budget. Parliament is about to debate it. So if there is, and all of the resources we have are allocated within that draft budget, so if it is Anna Sarwar's proposition that he would like to see more money go to local government, uh, then that is a legitimate proposal to make. But he has to say where he wants us to take that money from, because it would have to come from the National Health Service or the police budget or other budgets. So Anna Sarwar has the opportunity, and I will wait to hear uh, whether this proposition comes from Labour this afternoon, if he wants us to increase the allocation to local government, uh, he has to see us reduce the allocation to some uh, other part uh, of, of our budget. So let us know where he thinks that should come from, and then perhaps we can have uh, a proper grown-up discussion uh, other than the one uh, that he has just uh, had us have uh, this afternoon.